we are still existing. Over the course of the Earth's 4.5 billion year history, several supercontinents have formed and broken up. About 300 million years ago, the continent we now know as Asia was continuous with Africa, Europe, South America and North America. They all existed as a single continent called Pangaea. The word Pangaea is derived from the Greek word Panagaia, which means all the earth. The Pangaea was surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa, which means all the water. Now, in this video, let's have a look at how the seven continents came into existence and what if Pangaea had still existed. In the early 20th century, Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist and geophysicist, postulated the continental drift theory. He suggested that this Pangaea first broke up into two large landmasses called Angara Land and Gondwana Land, and later into several large parts. These parts then slowly started drifting away from each other, forming today's world. Now, how did Wegener come up with this theory? He presented some arguments in support of the continental drift theory. Let's have a look at those. The first one was that of the matching of continents. He noticed something curious in the world map. Wagner observed that the continents of South America and Africa looked like they would fit together remarkably well, like a jigsaw. Take away the Atlantic Ocean and these two massive landforms would lock neatly together. Similarly, when matched, Africa, Madagascar and India's east coast all fit together. Secondly, the geological structure. There is a remarkable similarity in geological structure along the two coasts of the Atlantic. The best example is provided by the Appalachian Mountains of North America, which come up right to the coast and continue their trend across the ocean in the old Hercynian Mountains of Southwest Ireland, Wales and Central Europe. The opposite coasts of Africa and Brazil display even greater resemblance in their structure and rocks. Third, distribution of fossils. Identical species and animals were found on both sides of the marine barrier. For example, Mesosaurus, a freshwater crocodile-like reptile that lived between 286 and 258 million years ago, is found in Southern Africa and East South America. The fourth argument is that of paleoclimatic evidence. Coal deposits have been found in both temperate and polar regions. However, coal is formed only in tropical regions. But what if that had never happened? And how different would our life be? What would the earth be like? If Pangaea still existed today, in theory, we could drive from Mumbai to Mexico or Mumbai to Melbourne since they'd all be part of the same landmass. And there would be a huge environmental change. For example, regions that used to have hot climates like the Indian subcontinent, the Middle East or Africa, regions on the borders of Pangaea would be cold and covered with ice. As you travel inside, you would find a lush evergreen forest in the middle of Pangaea. And as you travel further inland, it would become a desert. This would be due to Pangaea's landmass being so large. The rain which comes from the ocean wouldn't be able to travel far enough inland, leaving inner parts of Pangaea practically uninhabitable by humans and other species. Species diversification would also be much less. Geographical isolation is a prime factor in evolution of species. Without the selective pressures, new traits would also stop developing. For example, Madagascar broke off from Gondwana, Pangaea's southern half, 160 million years ago. About 9 of the 10 plant and mammal species that have evolved on the island are not found anywhere else on the planet, according to Conservation International. However, the continental drift theory has been heavily disputed. Although it was undeniably convincing and most of Wegener's observations about fossils and rocks were correct, but so much of the theory was based on speculation and inadequate evidence that it provoked a lot of criticism and controversy. The greatest criticism of this theory was the controversial forces that supposedly caused the actual continents to drift. One of them was gravitational force of sun and moon. But according to experts, 
had the gravitational force of the moon or sun was so strong to cause the landmass to break, then it would have stopped the rotations of the earth and made it stationary. Another reason of drifting was the rotation of earth. But in order to cause a drift in landmass, the rotations required should be at such a high speed that it would have thrown the atmosphere and everything else in outer space, away from the earth's gravitational pull. The theory also couldn't provide any answer to why this drift happened mostly northward and westward. And lastly, the theory did not explain the formation of oceanic ridges and island arcs. Although, it would be unfair to say that the continental drift theory was entirely ineffectual. Decades later, in the 1960s, technologies adapted from warfare made it possible to more thoroughly study Earth. Technologies that helped build seismometers and magnetometers. With seismometers, researchers discovered that earthquakes tended to occur in specific places rather than equally all over Earth. And scientists studying the seafloor with magnetometers found evidence of surprising magnetic variations near undersea ridges, alternating stripes of rocks recorded a flip-flopping of Earth's magnetic field. Together, these observations helped formulate a new theory proposed by researchers who built on Wegener's original idea of continental drift, the theory of plate tectonics. According to this theory, the Earth's crust is broken into roughly 20 sections called tectonic plates on which the continents ride. Because tectonic plates move very slowly, only a few centimeters per year on average, it takes a long time to observe changes. Scientists have found that the planet's continents will likely again be joined together in about 250 million years. Researchers have dubbed this future continental configuration Pangaea Proxima. The shift from the continental drift theory to the plate tectonics theory is a prime example of the scientific process. As more observations are made and measurements are collected, scientists revise their theories to be more accurate and consistent with the natural world. Let us know about your views in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.